Hello and welcome guys. You know the drill by now. It's another demo review. G2 are the team we're focusing on. We're basically just trying to find out how this new G2 lineup is going to play. Um, if we remember on the CT side from the first demo, it was Nico Monacy and Hunter towards middle, Hooksy on the B side anchor, JKS is the A side anchor. I doubt we're going to see much having changed between the last demo and this one. In fact, I expect nothing will have changed, but it will just give us a better idea of how this G2 are probably going to approach CT and T sides. All right, and um, we are live. I have already reviewed this round, uh, but my microphone was pointed off into the fucking ceiling somewhere. So we're back at it again. Read it, do over. So as we can see, Na'Vi are getting ready for a B hit. They've cleared out underpass. It looks like uh, Bit was responsible for that. And G2 have a pretty good setup actually to deal with a B hit. They've obviously got two on short. Um, so those two on short are going to be able to turn around very quickly and help. Hooksy throws that smoke to divide the site, give his team time to rotate in and also himself more angles to play over. Great opening kill from Monacy. Yeah, Bit spots Hooksy. Spam down through the smoke. Not much Hooksy can do there. Unfortunate for Nico. Um, he kind of knew Bit was there, so I'm not sure why he wasn't ready for that peak. But key frag for JKS to get here. Now the retake is on. A freebie for Hunter. Hunter getting that kill on Perfecto is very, very good, considering he got gooshed early on in that duel. Electronic cleaned up. Good retake from G2. Obviously, as we can see, the positions look like they're just about going to be the same. Um, doesn't look like they've uh, gone for any knee-jerk reactions on switching positions after their loss against Liquid. My memory did not fail me. Okie dokie. Hunter takes a lot of damage early, though. That's not great. Um, Na'Vi with a pretty solid buy here, obviously, because they got the bomb down. So this is um, a more interesting round than had Na'Vi not gotten the bomb down and gone for like a force buy. There's actually a decent amount of weight behind this. They've got three smokes, so they can do and execute some, but where they've got a few flashes, so they can clear some angles. They've got a couple of mollies. So th this, there's potency behind this buy from Na'Vi. <sighs> Perfecto. Might have just got timing. Gets a dink, but not the frag. Does a lot of damage, actually. So G2 are... Low on HP in this round. Na'Vi still with a pretty chilled out passive spread. They're taking their time with this one. There's no rush at the moment. A minute left on the clock. They've got full mid control. G2 are understandably with their low HP. They're kind of just falling back into the bomb sites and going to rely on the crossfires and training to make things happen. Aline with three towards the B site, which is interesting. Now we're probably going to see some rotations. Yeah, JKS mollied out. Nothing he can do there. This is looking very, very uh, promising for Na'Vi now. They have a big HP advantage. Nico is isolated on the side at the moment. Needed that frag. I'm not sure about the repeat from head trick there. Doesn't matter because Electronic finds the trade. 3v3. Going to have to be a retake from G2 now. And this is looking more positive now that Monacy gets that frag. I think they know where SDY is. Yeah, so SDY has to swing out and make something happen. Na'Vi will be okay with this. They've gotten the bomb down. They've gotten more cash in the coffers. And the defuse comes through. So a lot of trust put in uh, Nico and JKS on that A site. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if G2 tend towards B site leans because I think Hooksy is probably the weak link on the CT side. He's playing that B anchor role on Mirage. It's one of the worst positions in the game um, as a CT, just in terms of getting frags, getting rating and stuff like that. It's also not a super easy position to play just because of the way B site hits often come in. Utility reigns in, flashbangs, you can be blind for like 10 seconds. Nico playing more anchory and JKS playing closer to middle this round. Nope, other way around. For a second, I got the numbers confused in my head. So yeah, this is, is looking very, very similar to the CT setups uh, that we were seeing from G2 in their first game. Hunter up on short, Monacy towards middle, Nico kind of playing the middle lean of the A2. And JKS stuck under balcony. So JKS can play under balcony because he knows the utility is going to be pretty poor from Na'Vi, most likely. 
Um, you generally don't want to play under balcony when there's tons of utility because you're probably just going to get molotov to the site It's just going to get cut up with smokes and it's going to be very hard for you to even get a one and done really from under balcony um, It looks like Navi are grouping up for an A hit. G2 seem to be reading this I think Hooksy's slightly advanced position in apps and he's not seen anything has allowed for a bit of a lean towards A here So this is a good call from G2 early on their CT side Navi obviously using their bomb plants to kind of keep the economy pressure up. Electronic with a good trade there. Now this is a little bit tough because of where Nico and JKS are. It's not super easy for them to help each other necessarily. Hunter's coming and playing a little bit closer. Hooksy's already pushed. Yeah, great peak from Nico. Really good timing there. So this should be holdable now for G2. They've already got Hooksy pushing. Nico grabs another. Really good peak from well, Nico just tearing this round up. It was a good peak from Electronic, but Nico is just tearing this round to pieces. Yeah, and the flank from Hooksy comes to fruition. So a nice early few rounds from G2. Na'Vi probably have to take one on the chin now. Can buy up a few bits and pieces because the loss bonus has ramped up. But nonetheless, G2 in the driver's seat, getting that AWP out for Monacy. And yeah, Navi are taking a very light buy here. Couple of upgraded pistols, smattering of armor. Headtree keeps more in the bank so that he can go for an AWP next round. Obviously, Headtree playing in places simple here. So G2 have a great opportunity to pick up a win against Navi, who are one of the top two teams in the world. I don't know what Electronic, I think Electronic was playing Anti Flash for a second there, maybe. I don't know. And I think G2 have a decent read of this. Monacy leaning a little bit towards A. Oh, no, he's going back towards Kitchen. No, going towards CT. Okay, so yeah, I think G2 have a pretty solid read of what's going on here. Wouldn't be surprised to see Hooksy or Hunter getting a little bit more aggressive at some point soon. And Na'Vi, now that they've drained out a lot of utility on A, I think they understand here, Na'Vi, that G2 have a read on them. And so they're going to cancel that potential A hit. And instead, they're going to just slow it down a little bit, look to see if they can't catch a G2 member pushing. G2 being very disciplined so far on this uh, CT side, and they were quite passive early on on their CT side in the previous game. So it'll be interesting to see if the half develops in the same way. Will G2 start to play a little bit more aggressive with their CT setups as the half progresses? That's something I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on. The T side, I'm going to be very, very interested to see because the T side was what I think let them down in the previous game. And in the previous game against Liquid, it was 16-12, but it was only that close, really, because G2 won and converted both pistols. So, oh, Nico caught lacking. Yeah, but it should be fine for G2. Hedrick <laughs> takes fatty nade. And Hooksy should be able to clean this one up. So two kills, not bad for Na'Vi, considering they lost the first kill for free. Pretty decent return to get a couple of rifles out of hands. It's going to keep the G2 economy relatively honest here. As you can see, JKS and Nico. That's actually going to be Mona because he drops the rifle over. But as you can see, there's not a huge amount in the banks of G2 at this point. Na'Vi's uh, force buying kept the pressure up on the G2 economy and kept it modest. Kept it small, small economy. So yeah, more aggressive. Here we go from G2. So a much, much, much more aggressive type of setup. Uh, Na'Vi lose the pick a bit. Obviously that deep smoke in connector gives Mona C the exit route. Hunter was playing up close. Nico was playing up close. Much more aggressive mid setup here from G2. So it does look like uh, aggression is going to be something they're going to throw into their CT sides. But it's not hugely aggressive. It's not like a crazy top mid push. It's more of just um, a more aggressive way to kind of fight that early mid control, getting uh, Monacy down for that peak into underpass. And very, very patient from Monacy, not taking a shot too early there, making sure that when he does take the shot, he hits it. So falling more passive. Uh, let, here we go. So here's the push into A ramp from G2. Uh, this is a really, really, really timely push. They're going to get full information here, and I think they're going to potentially catch someone lacking. Nope, it looks like Nico's going to get very deep. And yeah, as, as you can see, Monacy is now rotating towards that B site. JKS is going to sit in Sandwich, it looks like, and just anchor A. 
Nico is ready with a quick flank. So already actually a bit more dynamic and aggressive early on uh, in the CT half from G2. Great setup, bait and switch there. The guy down a van throwing the smoke takes all the attention away from this potential position. Hunter now just trying to stay alive and let that Nico flank activate. So really well played round from G2 here. This is, that was a textbook CT round, and I think we're going to see a strong CT side in general from G2 Sports compared to their T side. Ah, they've gone for this double AWP again. Uh, 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 uh. I did not like this double AWP when I saw it in the Liquid game. Hooksy's going to pick it up and take it towards B. Didn't like it in the Liquid game. We'll see if it's any better this time around. Oh, failed Molly there. So Navi with a B lean. It looks like it's going to be a pretty early hit towards B here. SDY is very far up in apps. Gets the space. Oh, yep. Hooksy whiffs a shot. Gets away with it there. A little bit awkward. Uh, Hooksy definitely, definitely got away with one there, I think. Uh, I think if SDY hadn't gone for the reload, don't know why it did. Looked like it might have been a misclick, to be perfectly honest. But G2, just chilling. The standard 2 1 2. JKS. Now we actually have the switch up here where Nico's playing up close and JKS is playing further back. So this might be trying to play with information a little bit here. Um, they know that JKS is the A, or they might know that JKS is the A ank typically. So if you see JKS very far back in CT, maybe at that point you're expecting nobody else to be on the A site or the other player to be playing towards sort of stair connector, that sort of area. But G2 are going to deal with this round very very cleanly so g2 building up that bank now um we were talking earlier about how navi had managed to keep the economy modest but because when the guns properly came up and the economy stabilized for navi they didn't get that win interesting smoke or not that's for is that for apartments i would assume so i would assume that was an app smoke hang on i can see can i yeah that was an app smoke it's a cool lineup that okay so one for one yeah, the heavy mid fight, but it does not go their way. Navi with the advantage now. Hunter didn't really have an opportunity to trade that one, I don't think. Navi falling back towards A. They know they've killed two of the mid players, so there's a good chance they're going to find a two, or at least one of the sites is going to be understaffed. Hooksy trying to get into CT with that. Oh, no, he's going short, actually. Hunter's the one going CT. Hooksy's not going to be able to get involved with this. JKS with a really good frag. Oh, didn't quite slip away. Unfortunate. And Hooksy's just going to have to save this all. So the more aggressive mid approach backfiring there for G2. They didn't trade out effectively. And then Na'Vi were just pretty definitive about hitting the site. Um, once they've got that man advantage, if they just stay grouped, trade, then it's going to be a round win. So, yep, similar sort of setup. Not uh, Nico actually playing pretty close to that smoke there. Fairly aggressive. Yeah, so it's, again, another really aggressive uh, mid-approach from G2. And, again, it's not gone their way. Little bit disjointed. There was a smoke up in connector and a smoke up in window. I'm not sure I like Hunter going for that in that scenario, but there's a chance that Navi are distracted because of all the noise and all the nades that have come from window and connector. So I think that's part of what Nico was doing there. He was trying to kind of bait the attention so that Hunter could get that swing out, but Navi ready for it. Navi making sure not to get distracted and all look at the same things. So Monacy with a bit of a risk here, but it was to get some info and maybe get a pick. Because G2 need to level things up, but Bits heard that. I think Na'Vi now know that the A site is understaffed. And they're going to be able to exploit that. And this should be a G2 save, to be honest. I think G2 have gambled on the B hit, potentially. Should just see a save coming through when this hit comes through. JKS might be able to get one for one. But he's tucked away in ramp, so I think this bomb is going to go down. And G2 will probably give half a thought to having a look seeing if they can get an early frag and then maybe they go for it but they might even just save with four here
Yeah, so G2 are moving. As we can see, Electronic is lurking in apps here. So there is a four on four if G2 can get to the site. Ah, Electronic's heard this. He might be able to catch Hunter out here. Nope, he's not going to. So Electronic is out of the round at the moment. This is doable for G2. I don't think they're necessarily going to know this. This frag, nah, that was very important. I think that's round over now. G2 look like they're going to still go for it. Yeah. It's not going to happen, though. Yeah, and G2 are now going to bail out. Monacy's not going to get away. Yeah, I think probably a mistake to go for it there. G2 generally seem to be erring on the side of let's fight and let's go for it. Might just be an early season thing. It's like, look, we're, we're still trying to figure things out. Um, G2 taking a timeout now. Lost, obviously, two rounds on the bounce. Time to think about it. They've got one more bite. I expect to see them, yeah, here we go, switching things up from Hunter is going to come towards middle from connector with Nico and they're going to, there is see, so they change up the way they decide to try and fight this. Okay, Mona C. Oh, nice from JKS. Okay, so really good mix up from G2 there. Um, sticking with the heavy mid fight, but going for it in a different way, sending two through connector. Got a very heavy alien here now, though, and I think that's why Bit is going to investigate and Hedrick is going to head back. Hedrick might throw some sort of utility to try and... Nope, he's going to go into Palace. Okay, so they're going to try and use Bit as like a... Yeah, to bait some rotations. Hooksy's throwing that divider smoke. Oh, that's what I call it, because the way it like divides the site, it cuts the site, cuts the angles. So JKS is now kind of been left on his lonesome. Navi have cut noise to make G2 wonder. I wonder if Navi maybe could have gone a little bit more aggressively off of the back of that like partial fake from Bit. Yeah, they're just hoping Bit can get a frag of something. He's putting a lot of pressure out for one guy being here, Bit. So now Navi are going to creep out and play contact from... Ah, but the head trick scope gives it away. Head trick needed to be scoped in earlier, though. Just an individual mistake, I think, there. Yeah, I think that's just an experience thing from Hedrick there. I, he shouldn't be scoping in Palace there. He should have scoped way further back and just walked in with his scoping. Um, he gives away the game by scoping there. You can say maybe, well, Navi are already committing, so it doesn't matter, but I think they would have had a little bit more of a chance of surprise. Like G2 had no idea where they were, and then the second that scope comes through, suddenly people are looking at Palace. So really good CT side from G2 so far, though. Yeah, another different look to the middle. They are going to put Monacy in Whorehouse, and he's going to go to Short. Really good read from Nico. And back into a more standard setup now. Yeah, Hunter's going to be the, uh, the guy who plays a little bit more towards window because of the fact they set Monacy up on Short early. Bit of a scuffed buy from Navi, all things considered. Bit of noise there from Hunter. Nice entry from Nico. He's now going to, yep, turn around and look towards here. Ooh. Bit of like a day school from Nico there, I think. Nice from Monacy, though. Oh, unlucky JK. That's a hard angle. I, d I don't really like that angle. I think it's it's really hard to even get one from that angle because a tease will just come out pretty far in that bad boy. Nice from Onisi. Leg on perfecto. This is doable for Hunter. Yep, very doable. It's all on head trick now. He's going to swing. Oh, nice from Hunter. That's such a... That's so ratty. You're so annoyed if you die to that one. Cool. So they saved the AWP. Really, really sick CT side so far from G2. That's all there is to it. It's just really, really nice. Bit of a hectic round there. It obviously got uh, a little bit chaotic. It's hard to kind of keep track of exactly uh, what's going on. That's a round you probably, if you want to really, really analyze it and break it down, you have to go back and look at it a little bit slower. Yeah, Navi timeout again, unsurprising. Probably trying to figure out what they're doing because they uh, have enough to buy with electronic dropping. So they were probably just figuring out the economy there. Um, if electronic hadn't been on like 10k, then they would have probably taken like a, a more partial buy. But they go for the full and they're going to go very fast towards B. They're going to test that uh, that hold from Hooksy and Hunter. 
Bits already out. SCY finds Hooksy. Yeah, yeah, that's unfortunate. Hooksy needs to probably get one there. And I think this is probably going to be a uh, a theme for G2 on their CT side. I think Hooksy as a small site anchor is going to be the point of weakness. Um, from an individual standpoint, G2 probably just needs to save here. Maybe if Monacy gets uh, an early frag, they look for it. They do have kits all around, but and a bit of utility. It's not it's not in unfathomable that they go for this, but I think with the lead they've got, they just don't need to. I think they can just save all their guns, get a decent buyout next. Yeah, I, I once yeah, I think we just just call it there. I really hate this call. I fucking hate this. Yeah, I I don't like this at all. I think too long is ticked on the bomb here, and they're just gonna lose all these guns. Oh my god. Okay, so they're nah. Yeah, there's just too long, man. That was too late to try and go for it. I fucking hate that from G two. I'll be honest. Because now you're in a much worse economical spot, and you can't. They're probably. I I would say G two are probably going to try and force it. I think if you go for that, it's got to be because you're going to force in the following round, and you just want to take all the guns out of Navi and really try and limit their economy. Um. Yep. Here, here it is. They're gonna go for something. <sighs> CT's timing out. I uh, yeah. I think this might be where G two have kind of scuffed what was a really really nice CT half with some kind of poor decision making. They have to just buy up on everyone. Yeah. So they force up. It's it's a pretty shit buy. Um. Not much utility. Two pretty poor weapons. One. Yeah. The famas is okay. Still not as good as the Galil. And Na'Vi have much su the superior weaponry. The big thing G2 do have is they do have the AWP. So there is the potential to just get a one and done and basically completely spin the round. Ooh, oh, I was worried. Yeah. It's just the timing here. If if Nico gets... Uh, Nico, sorry, Monacy gets timings on the peak from top mid. But he's not seeing anything. So they got full mid control here, uh, G2, pretty much. I guess Bit is being annoying in underpass, making some noise. They've got a Lurker and Electronic looking towards B. It's interesting that Electronic's not playing towards the center of the map so much. Just from Navi's point. Mm, I don't like that push. Why? Why? You don't need to. Why Why? Why do you need to go for that? What? What's What's the logic there? Navi have not put major pressure on. And you haven't lost major map control elsewhere. Like, I don't understand that push from JKS. I'll be honest with you. I don't agree with that one. Yeah, no, no. Literally, just because JKS died there, they're in the 3v2. You know, JKS dying for free. Otherwise, they've traded out evenly. And now Electronics Lurk is going to come to fruition. Yeah, Na'Vi are just going to go all the way back with the bomb. And Electronics just going to hold the rotations. G2 need to save here. They've got an AK and Norp. Just save. I think very quickly they need to be calling the, the save call here. And with where Monacy is sat, I think they will call the save. Hooksy maybe going to have a look. I don't know, man. Maybe if Hooksy gets a free one, maybe that's what he's going to try and do here. Yeah, Monacy's getting closer, so they're, they're, they're taking the fact that Hooksy's got so much space for free. Okay, now you probably just say, hey, Monacy, chill out. They're going for it again. Why not just keep an AK and an AWP for the next? Like, I... Really not agreeing with the decision making G2 here. Feels like they're choking away what was a really, really good half. Um, just through some bizarre decision making. Um can't say if this is Hooksy calling all of this or if this is some individual errors coming through. Cause the calls out of spawn have seemed pretty good. It's some of the mid uh to late round decision making that's been been lacking, I think, in this CT half from from G2. So G2 are just going to have to take uh, this on the chin. At least Monacy's economy is in line with the rest of them. So um, that's a, a positive. And Na'Vi's economy is still not built yet. So there, it's not like disaster territory yet for G2. But they're letting Na'Vi back into a half that I don't think they needed to let them back into. I think this is um, a bit suspect. I'll be honest, from G2. So pretty heavy middle lean, like all five players are playing like pretty close to middle. 
Um, just, I think, looking to explode out and just... Ooh, Hooksy getting... Yeah, bitch. Murders. Nico murdered. Okay, cool. Uh, whoops. Sorry, I just meant to uh, start speeding through this because... Oh, wait. Mona C's making the round. What? I thought that round was done. Mona C's making it happen somehow. The bomb is no fucking where near B. A is completely open, but there's no way Perfecto can know that. Oh, he's going back now. Okay, okay. Now they've made the call. Oh, no. And he's gone back. Bit getting a lot done with this Macca dad. This Maccus of Daddingham. Oh, Monacy whiffs the key shot. And G2 are going to lose the round. That's so Monacy to hit, like, those three shots on A and, like, give the team a chance, only to then kind of whiff... <laughs> Was it the easy, easy shot? No, I guess he's peeking, but I, I think he probably would make that shot more often than not in face it. So a little bit disappointing there, but still good economic damage from G2. And as you can see, Na'Vi's money still not really building up. Hedrick has some cash, but SDY and Electronic pretty low. Perfecto and Bit, not the most in the bank. G2, full rifles, yeah, pretty scuffed. And as you can see, this is where G2's economic decisions earlier in the in the half, like, really bite them in the arse because they've not got a good buy here. Good crossfire setup, though. Yeah. Good crossfire from JKS and Nico. Navi are going to get the sight and get the bomb down. Not much in terms of flashes for the retake. They can smoke and partition off the site. That's a really, really key for to get. Yeah, now they can block off Palace. They could even block off Ramp, which I think they should do. Yep, they're going to do that. And now this is really very, very difficult for Na'Vi to, to get anything done here. And I think Na'Vi probably just walk away and save the rifles. Nope, they're going to try and flash Perfecto over. Okay. Nice from Perfecto. Oh my god, that was so nearly a six spray lined up. Full 10 second defusal. And Mona C just watches the smoke. So nice from G2 to recover in that round. Um, obviously, there was a good crossfire from JKS and Nico early on. And now, chance for a 10 5 half. And Navi are going to have to take probably a, a little bit. Yeah, they're going to have to take a bit of a hit on the buy. It's not going to be great. Good chunk of utility. At least one AK. I think maybe two? Yep, two AKs. Oh, SCY bought a Tekkers, and then there we go. Now he drops it over. Okay, so looks like they're going to try and head back to that B hit. When in doubt, run at Hooksy and see if he can stop you. Now, Hunter trying to get up very... Okay, really nice from Hooksy. There we go. So that that is um, Hooksy doing an excellent job. At least it's the two shitty guns, but Hooksy gets another. God damn. Okay, there we go. That's that's what we need to see. This this CT half, really nice from G2. A little bit of a wobble towards the middle of the half where I think they made some poor decisions and nearly chucked a very convincing half away. But there you go, 10-5, even with some dodgy decision making. And I think that shows the, the potency of the G2 CT side. I think that's going to be the half that's going to be better for them in general. I think that's gonna. this is going to be their half. It's going to be the CT half. Now, the T side is where I was seeing a bit of just not much to give me hope in the liquid game it it didn't look great so let's see how they do in this t half obviously i know the result fuck i always forget to go on do not disturb on my steam where was i what was i saying i'm confused no yeah as i was saying um i know the result of this game so i obviously know how this half goes for g2 but i want to see it unfold before my eyes um, and not just assume like, oh, shit, t half. I, I want to watch it and see if maybe Na'Vi just play an amazing defense. But G2 are massively in the driver's seat with a 10-5 half. Looks like we're just going to get a big boy B play contact potentially. Na'Vi not set up very well to deal with this. So if G2 just walk out and just play contact... Yeah, this is going to be rough. 
for Na'Vi to hold. This is going to be very rough for Na'Vi to hold. Very, very rough. G2 need to get the bomb down sooner or later. Okay, so they do. That was another thing I saw occasionally on their T side on the previous against Liquid is I felt like they held the bomb for too long sometimes. That was not well coordinated. Yeah, again, just a lack, I think, of coordination a little bit here on the T side. Again, I think that, that peek into Kitchen wasn't super well coordinated. Na'Vi hit all their shots, though, so I, I think you've got to give credit to Na'Vi on this one. Na'Vi hit, like, everything. It was just straight headshots coming out of the, the CIS boys. A couple of kills for Hedrick, which will be good for him to, to build up a little bit of confidence. Let's see. Uh, we'll just probably skedaddle through this one. G2 are going to do... Oh, okay, we'll, we'll watch because G2 have gone for the full force uh, and it's not bad because of their um, bomb plant. So very heavy A presence. Okay, so let's let's take a look. So Hooksy's actually the lurker in this round. Hooksy's going to make his way through middle solo. Everybody else is grouped up towards A. Probably not going to be representative of what we see on gun rounds. Nico would have given, I think, some info to Electronic there. I think he would have heard the burning in the steps. Yeah, this is very, very... Who is it that got caught in No Man's Land there trying to get... Was it Mona C got caught trying to pick up the fucking AK? Okay, but this is very, very doable for G2. So, uh, just not a great setup from Na'Vi to deal with what G2 were throwing. So, it was a great call, I think, from Hooksy there. I think he uh, read the Na'Vi setup pretty well. And this should probably not be around for Na'Vi. They got a kit, so they're probably going to... You know, I know, maybe they're going to try and catch Lurk and then maybe they'll go for it. I don't think they're going to go for it, Na'Vi. It looks like they're not interested. Now, maybe they are? No. Might try and recover that gun. I think it was an AK, right? Nope, they don't even try. Because they got M4s anyway. So really good round to recover from G2 there. Um, this is now looking a bit suspect for Na'Vi. They're going to have to put together a bit of a janky force by. At least they saved the two M4s, so it's not a disaster. But yeah, this is a, a scuffed buy. Nico on the palace lurk. Seen a lot of Nico lurking towards A. JK, the rest just go out middle. Oh, and they get mowed down by a bit. Mona C flashed his entire team. So yeah, the uh, the T side is again looking very messy from Navi. That was just Monacy flashing his teammates there. I I wonder how blind they were. Uh, but oh, electronic caught out by Monacy there. Just unlucky on the the way the positioning was working there. Oh no, Hooksy loses the bomb. This is oh, this is hard to predict. Obviously, due to have the better weaponry, but with the bomb lost, they don't know where everyone is. I think Nico should chill here. Great bot, a great grenade. Okay, so oh, really nice shot from Perfecto though. And he's gonna try and juke Monacy out here. He's gonna just make sure Monacy doesn't know whether. Is he gonna hear those top mid steps? Nope. But he is gonna get to short. Oh, he's gonna get into window. Okay, so he's done the window jump. Monacy hoping he can bait a peek. But it looks like Perfecto is going to stay tucked. Oh, okay. So Monacy has juked out Perfecto and made him think he might be going back towards B. Monacy using all of the time available to clear out as many angles as possible. CT is the one place you're probably a bit scared of because he didn't get deep to clear. Yeah, and Perfecto's. Uh... Probably go for it in the 1v1. Menacey should win this. Menacey probably should have won that, I think. But what are you going to do? Sometimes you're going to win jewels, sometimes you're going to lose them. He did have a bit of HP gone, so maybe it was a more even fight. But he had the chance to get in the headshot. So good... From Perfecto, I think it all comes down to the really scuffed mid-take there from G2. 
I'd uh, be interested to see if that flash actually blinded uh, all of Monacy's teammates. G2 going at it again. Another fucking go. Let's go, boys. So Na'Vi obviously with a much better buy. G2 going to do something fast towards A. It's been tough to see what G2 are going for. They've gone for a lot of calls out of spawn so far this half. Monacy's wrecked. Okay, so communication issues there. Definite communication issues there. There is a lack of cohesion on the T side uh, that's very, very noticeable for G2. Very, very noticeable. This round should be over. Yeah, I think G2 are just going to hang out here. They can't really go and get any other map control elsewhere. They're just going to probably hang out here. I'm just speeding through because this should be done, so. Yeah. So, uh, call out spawn there. Um, yeah, just surprising that Monacy didn't know where he was killed from. Uh, or the communication just wasn't quick enough to let JKS know. Uh, JKS having a stinker of a game, by the way. 5, 2, and 11 at the moment. Only 5 frags in 19 rounds. And G2 on the full eco, so we'll just, yeah, we'll just speed through it. All right, guns back out for G2. I expect a default here. Okay, so this is their default. Nico goes Palace, JKS goes Hunter, and oh, it's Hunter actually towards B, and it's Monacy and Hooksy towards middle. Really good early frag from Hooksy there. Better mid take. And now Hunter has some space to work with towards B. And Na'Vi are going to have to stretch their defense a little thin. Hunter going to walk around that smoke. He knows it was thrown from short. Is Hunter going to be able to catch the timing? Doesn't look like it. Looks like he's just going to take the advanced positioning. Maybe here? There we go. Really nice from Hunter. So yeah, they might a better round from G2 here. Um, the concept worked as it was intended to. Yeah, Nico's going to now be the... the uh, sorry, JKS is now going to be the guy who rotates towards middle and kind of looks after the mid backstab and, and the backstab through underpass. Looks like Navi are just going to save this one, though. JKS loses another duel. Not been JKS's day today. RG2 going to hunt. I wouldn't. The economy is... Bad. You probably just have to uh, let Navi save. Navi's money is going to be still really good. Um, they can drop and get a full buy. Maybe even a slightly better buy than G2 can manage because G2 are going to have to drop an AK. No, G2 should be okay. They should be able to get like the the full full belts of utility on everyone. Yeah, it's all good. Everyone's uh, on a full buy, basically. One nade short for a bit, but nothing to write home about. Right, so another call out spawn here. Hunter's going to be the mid guy this time around. Playing anti flash for a second there. And it's going to be fairly early towards spawn. So a lot more calls out spawn, less defaulting from G2 on this T side. And I wonder if that is an attempt to kind of deal with their lack of cohesion on the T side. Okay. So G2 are going to get the site. A little bit slow to scale here, G2. Probably want to get a move on and not allow all these smokes to, to, to drop. Oh, they've blinded bit too Fucking shit, dear. He was blind as a bit. Monacy going to hold the CT angle. I don't... Yeah, I don't think that flash is needed, probably, Monacy, mate. <laughs> Bits just get peppered down through these... Uh, through this box and ticket. Yeah, dead. Okay, so G2 kind of just patient there. Just making sure that they are ready to take jewels together. Still keeping it slow. Still got enough time. 
Ooh, little CT smoke there just to a dribble smoke just to give Hedrick a little bit of room to work with so G2 have slowed it right down I think they need to start thinking about getting a move on now Hooksy is not gonna have time okay he's at least in middle making sure nobody can be looking through connector yeah I, I think this was again I think G2 were a bit slow getting the bomb on the site yep and they're kind of chucking the round away Yeah, G2 throw another T round. Um, they do this thing, G2, and they've done this a few times on both maps where they get the site and then they slow it right fucking down and they leave the bomb somewhere. They let all their utility go and then Na'Vi have line, or in obviously in the previous game's case, Liquid, they have clear lines of sight uh, into the bomb sites. And I think, that's, I think that's a G2 round through and through. I think you've got to put that one down as G2 chucking that round away. Again, just some weird mid-round decision-making um, from G2. It, it, it comes through, I think, most on their T side, where the cohesion seems to be off. But on their CT side too, um, they could have had a, like a 12-3 half, I think, if they hadn't made some kind of scuffed mid-round and late-round decisions on some of those CT rounds. So default spread, uh, let's just have a look at it. We've got Hunter going down towards underpass. Uh, Nico on his own on the a lurk. So Hunter and JKS are going to go play towards extremities. And Monacy and Hooksy are the mid-control duo. So a little bit more fluid on T-side with, with how they're um, approaching the rounds. In general, it's like Hooksy, Hunter, JKS. Uh, Hooksy, Hunter, Monacy, like some combination of those three. They are the mid-control pack, as you can see Hunter here going through underpass. And JKS is now joining him and Nico's on his own on the lurk. So JKS, you know, relegated from the lurk. Mm, great, great play from Navi there to get the frag. And now G2's concept for the round is kind of scuffed because they needed that that second prong of the attack. So instead they're gonna try and boost someone into window, it looks like, to that so that that can be kind of the second prong of the attack, so they're not all just running up connectors for Hedrick picking Hunter, though, probably means this round's done. Uh, yeah, they're just kind of no man's land in, in middle now. Uh, no real map control, no real pressure anywhere. Uh, yeah. What do we put this round to? Yeah, just not really give themselves much of a... Oh, good good shot from Monacy, though. Nice from JKS. Okay, so this round is now suddenly very doable. Uh, not with 10 seconds. No, I lied. They're going to just have to save. <laughs> I didn't see the time on the clock. Ah, uh, they get a couple guns out of Na'Vi's hands. Like, it is going to have some impact on the Na'Vi economy because they haven't had a chance to build a huge bank, but not not majorly. Really not majorly. So now Na'Vi have a decent chunk of money in the bank. G2 are in the doldrums. It's hard economic decision here for G2. Do they try and buy up around Monacy and JKS? Because Monacy and JKS will not be able to get a buy in the next round. Whereas the other three will. So yeah, they're going to force around the two. It's a shit economic decision to have to make. But probably on balance the right one. So G2 in uh, rough straights now bit of noise from hunter so what was the monacy yeah that's i don't i don't really know what the the concept is from g2 on t side man it's so different the way they set up in every round they don't really seem to have like a super standard default like sometimes uh, i mean i guess hunter generally goes towards underpass and comes out underpass and has some sort of mid presence and it looks like they, they do they've done a couple of four ones They seem to like the four ones on this T side. I've seen seen quite a lot of that over the two games. Good entry frag there. Really good training to get into the site. And the rifle on Nico now. Oh, good from electronic though. Oh, good trade. Good frag from Monacy. Okay, so this probably shouldn't be doable for SDY. Yeah, it's not. It's not doable. Right, so nice little 4-1, good trading out onto the site. That was one of the most coordinated hits we've seen from GE2 over these last two games. That was, that was nice.
Hunter didn't really get much done with his his mid lurk, did he? Was there were there any? Uh... Oh, I can't I can't see in the thing. I was hoping to get the kill feed. Okay, so what is the concept here? So Hunter again, the middle guy. Another four one with Hunter as the one. So they they seem to be going for this four one shit because it, it seems to be working for them. It worked the last time, so. Yeah, no reason not to, to stick with what's working. Hunters might catch a timing here. SDY gets fragged. Hunter needs this one. Good one from Hunter. Okay, so this is a tough round, I think, for Na'Vi now with their positioning. Oh, Electronic getting that kill on Hooks. He's very, very key, though. They're going to get the bomb down early, not do any of that faffing about. Probably want a deep CT flash for Nico here. It looks like Hunter's lining it up. Or oh, maybe cancel that now. Oh, Nico jumped. I don't think he meant to do that. Oh, and then, yeah, Mona C. He had to do something aggressive. He couldn't just leave it in a four on two. So I understand why Mona C's going for that there. Again, just a bit slow to do what they wanted to do. Coordination just a little bit off. Yeah, and Hunter's not really got it. It's such a shit after plant spot in a, in a like, 4v whatever. In a 1vx, that is such a bad after plant spot. Not Hunter's fault. Um, maybe you could have tried to reposition into ramp, but it's just not a night. I, I hate that after plant spot when you're, um, I hate that after plant spot in general. It just feels so easy for the CTs to swing and pre-fire you. It feels like such a hard duel, um, for whoever's on Tetris. Um, but especially in a disadvantaged kind of situation, it, I think it's a really rough spot. CT timeout's interesting. I guess because this is Na'Vi's chance to like take over the game. Like they should know that the G2 economy is scuffed. Maybe they're ex thinking that some sort of force might come through from G2, but nah, the G2 economy is uh, in the dirt. Hunter can probably afford to drop an AWP next though. So they get in 2400. So yeah, it wouldn't be great though. I, I think they'll probably not have an AWP out next, but we'll see. We'll see how uh, how vital G2 think it is to get the AWP in Monacy's hands. This will be a good indicator, actually, of, of how much they're comfortable just to roll with five rifles, or if they, they want that AWP, if it's possible. So what's the spread here? Uh, just, again, a bit random. JKS on alert, Monacy and Hunter and Hooksy on mid-control. Nico's going to join up, and it's going to become a 4-1 again. Monacy with a really nice entry there onto head trick. That's super nice. Still shouldn't be anything G2 can do in this round. Yeah. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hunter here. Okay, no, no, no. This is this is doable. It's going to require a free kill from someone. That's so unlucky, Hunter, on the timing there. Not really his fault. JKS hasn't really had a chance to activate here. They can get out onto A. Monacy does have an AWP, and Nico is going to get the bomb. Don't tap it. Don't tap it. Just stick the bomb down. Yeah, I, I don't. Come on. Let's let's chill with the tapping. We're overcomplicating things. In a round where getting the bomb down is absolutely a fucking success, don't, don't throw the bomb plant away by trying to be clever. So Monacy got a read. Nice. Will he read? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, this is, this is still doable. He saw... JKS gets a rifle. Yeah, fuck me, JKS, man. You're having a stinker. Absolute stinker, man. Jesus Christos, that was bad. He, sh that's, he should have that kill 10 times out of 10. Yeah, that, that, that was pretty poor from JKS. Not having a, a good game on the frag in front here. Might see having a banger. It's been doing well. Okay, so back at parity. They did drain the Navi economy very nicely with that round. So there is a chance to kind of make the end of this game. This is a very, very key round. Very, very, very key. Both teams on full buys. Both teams got everything they want. So they, they with the bomb plant, they were able to get the bit of a whiff from Monacy. They probably should hit that shot. Okay, so what's the concept? Hunter, Hooksy, Monacy is the mid. Nico lurking A, JKS, Extremity at B. 
So that seems to be like the very vague general concept on their defaults, with the one three one defaults. But they like one fours. They like four ones. Sorry. They, uh, oh, okay. Monacy red like a book on that peak. Electronic with a free kill. And this is where G2 haven't felt very, very good. They haven't felt very good when the mid rounds get messy and, and it's time to go to plan B. But let's see if they have a better concept this time. It, they're, they're making a decent, I think, call. Like they, they're in actually not a bad spot here. Is someone throwing a nade there, JKS? Or is he. Yeah, he's lining up a nade now. CT, I think. I think that will pop CT. Yep. Okay, so now they need to go with that smoke. They can't faff around. If they want to have any chance. Okay, so good little jungle. Oh, bit catches Hooksy. Hunter catches bit, though. Unlucky not to get that trade. Yeah, just, just Navi getting the frags they need to. At least it felt like there was some like concept there from from G two though, um, like they actually got themselves into a, a, a you know workable position in the mid round there, and that's felt like their weakness mid round to late round decision making um, on this T side so far. Be interesting to see how long that holds because you can definitely put that down to just um, a lack of familiarity and practice. I think the CT side is easier to get right. Especially in a CT's favored meta, but just the, the way CT side works, you know, a lot of the decisions flow naturally. Uh, if you know how to play the game, you can generally play around and off your teammates on the CT side, I think, a bit easier. Whereas T side, you need to take initiative. It's less about being reactionary. Unlucky. Hunter maybe should have got that frag. Good trade from Monacy, though. They are going to get the bomb down. Ooh, Nico versus SCY. Mm, good trade from Hedrick. Hard for G2, I think, to win this one. Still a bit of utility as well on... Uh, they've now isolated Hooksy. Hooksy needs to win this duel in CT with Perfecto. Monacy gets one. Yeah, it's unlucky. Monacy's got two angles to deal with. Hedrick played that nicely to just kind of bait with the jiggles and stuff. Just keep Monacy scared. Came down close, and now uh, G2 do still get another buy because of the bomb plant. Let's see what G2 go for. Is it going to be an out of spawn call? Is it going to be a default? Is it going to be one of their four ones that they've liked going to? No, so they are going to go for the mid control. So this is one of their standard defaults. JKS, Ramp, Nico Palace, Monacy lining up a smoke of some sorts. Uh, he's going to head back towards A. Hooksy and Hunter are very passively holding mid control. Now they'll take it. They've got the full utility out. So they're going to get that mid control. Perfecto coming up short. It looks like Na'Vi are probably going to go for a re-aggress, I think. Hunter dies. Hooksy does get the trade, though. Okay, okay, okay. Now they've isolated the A site. They need to go. Now they go. Now go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Mm, still a little bit slow to get out. Still a little bit slow. Nice from Hooksy. Okay, okay, okay. This was, a this was a round from G2. This was nice. So I think the T sides already look much better in this game than it did against Liquid. I think it's much improved. Still seeing similar kinds of problems i think a little bit of communication and cohesion i think lacking i think in the mid to late round they sometimes it when plan a doesn't appear to have worked they get a little bit um okay they've lost two frags here don't <laughs> don't don't throw this one away boys no it's fine Okay, so CT timeout here, figuring out what to do with the scuffed cash. And SDY is just going to get a shit gun full belt. Yep. Um, obviously, a Mac Daddy on G2. Hunter is the middleman. 
it's another one of those four ones. And Hunter is very quickly going to come and join the main attack. Hedrick gets the opener. Really good from Hooksy. Oh, Hedrick picks Monacy, though. I don't know. Did he need to jump? Try and just jump over that angle? G2 get the bomb down. Doable for sure for G2. Nobody coming from short for the time. Nah, not, not so much anymore. I understand Nico trying to make the peak, though, trying to make it into a delivery three. Good shot from Hooksy. Good shot from Hunter. Okay, okay, okay. They know where they are, though. Really key from Electronic. Now this is probably done. Yeah, just Hooksy. They're just going to double peak him. And that is game. Much improved T side, I think, from G2. And not because Na'Vi were playing a bad CT side. I think G2 looked a little bit better in general on that T side. So um, CT, pretty much the same thing. I think the CT halves are going to be better from G2 as, as at the start. Um, not just because it's the CT side of meta and all that. Obviously, your CT halves generally will be better than your T halves in terms of the rounds you pick up. But just compared to the rest of the field, it looks like G2 have a, have a solid, strong CT side. Still a couple of wobbly moments with mid and late round decision making. I didn't like some of the calls to go for retakes and stuff. It looked like G2 were playing a little bit... A little bit fast and loose maybe is the best way to put it. Maybe a little bit overconfident at times that they can make things happen when I think the better decision in terms of expected value looking at the game long term was was to kind of save and and you know live to fight another day as it were but still had a big ct half t half again let them down a little bit as you can see it's isolated rounds here but if we look at the scoreboards um we can see that ct half was pretty pretty good in general especially the rounds they won here's where it went in for a bit of a wobble but if we look at it there's only a couple of rounds they won where it even got close. Whereas here, they're pushing Na'Vi close a lot of these rounds. A lot of these rounds that they're losing, they're pushing Na'Vi close. So um, I think G2 probably can consider themselves a little bit unlucky to lose this game. Again, on the T side, it looks like Cohesion is lacking a little bit. Again, in the mid round, if the plan A doesn't work, they seem to be a little bit disjointed, a little bit slow to put together plan B and figure out what they're doing. And I think that probably can come down to communication for sure. Uh, JKS had a fucking stinker this game. 43 ADR, um, whiffing some frags he should definitely be hitting. That's it. That's all I got for you. Um, like and comment and, and share with all your matey boys and girls and otherwise. And if you didn't like it, I don't care.